Hi everyone, welcome to the Psych Mom Show. I'm the Psych Mom, Barry Morgenstein. I'm excited to be here with my Mom Squad guests. We have Wendy Solomon and Martha Kinney from the Speech Vine, and they're here to share their wonderful knowledge with us about speech and language. So welcome ladies, thank you so much for coming to the Psych Mom Show. Thanks for having us. Great. Well, one of the things I want to ask you, which I think a lot of parents out there are wondering, is um, about what speech therapists do. I think that a lot of people assume that speech therapists work only on articulation and they help kids with their R's and they help you know, with their speech sounds, but I know that that's not only what you do. So can you tell us a little bit more about what are a wide variety of things that you do other than just articulation? You're right, Barry. A big part of what we do is articulation or speech, and that's the part that people think of as speech. But there is much, much more. Um, a lot of what we do focuses on what a child can tell you. Can he give his thoughts or her thoughts and ideas? Um, with very, very young children, are they speaking yet? Are they able to say anything? And can we just give them a nudge in communicating? Um, a lot of communication as children get older has a lot to do with reading and writing and their understanding of language and how that's going to relate. Another big, big part that is growing is social language. Okay. Um, do you understand the social nuances of language? Do you understand body language and the way uh, you speak when you're speaking with different people? So there's a lot to it. Now, when you say social language, do people also know that as pragmatic language too? Is that one of the terms that exactly. people that people? I think that's kind of a hot topic too because I think that that is an area where a lot of kids are struggling now, and I think a lot of kids on the spectrum kind of have a hard time with it. Can you talk a little bit more, um, Wendy, about um, what social language is or pragmatic language is, and give us some examples and why it's so important. Pragmatic languages, when you're looking at any language, you're really looking at um, three different areas. One being, can they understand what's spoken to them? The second being, can they use words to express themselves? Like, do they have good vocabulary? Do, can they form a sentence? Do they know verbs? But when you get into social language, you're actually looking at can they, if they have language, can they actually use it in real life situations? And use it appropriately. And use it appropriately to start a conversation, to ask questions to people, to respond to people. Do they look at people when they're, when they're talking to them? Can they kind of join a group? That's a big part with, with some kids that especially have lower language skills. They just kind of sometimes stand on the sidelines of a classroom, mm -hmm. and that can sometimes be one of the first indications that there may be some issues with language is that really quiet kid right. that doesn't really join in. And sometimes it may be because they don't have the language to join in. There's also a lot of psychological issues right, that right. they may be on the side of the room. So, you know, in addition to maybe some low language skills, it could be anxiety, right. um, a lot of attention, a lot of different things that could play into why they're not engaging and using their language. And it could be really weak receptive language, which is being manifested in weak expressive right. language. Mm -hmm. um, right. Martha, can you tell us um, some things that both you and Wendy do to help kids? Give us some examples of some th activities you do to help kids with social language. One of the most successful things we do is run social language groups where they, we provide more real life experiences with it while it is guided. Um, we work a lot on perspective taking and do, do children understand that others are thinking about them. And that's a difficult concept that takes a while to get, but when, you, when they can understand, wow, this isn't just me, it makes all of those other language skills make a lot more sense. Um, and in those social language groups, we set up opportunities for them to join in, for them to practice behaviors that are acceptable and they're taught in smaller steps. So it's really like a social skills group but with the basis in language. language. It's That's and language. sometimes when you get into the social skills groups and you start working with the child you realize that um, there may be certain areas where th that's the reason that they can't use the language. Like a lot of times um, I'm working with a student and as she got in a social language group I realized she had no understanding of question forms. So if you don't understand who, what, where, when, why, why? and mm -hmm. how to answer those kind of questions, it's obviously it's going to impact you socially wow. when you try to have a conversation with someone. So sometimes you can kind of tease out specific language tasks too that 
they need to boost that up and that will make them more successful in social situations. That's neat. What a fun job you have. It definitely sounds a lot more exciting than just working on TH sounds or rolling your R's appropriately. <laughs> so thank you um, Martha and Wendy for coming and telling us all about speech and language and uh, we're going to have Martha and Wendy back for a few more videos talking about some other aspects of communication and speech and language development. So thanks Mom Squad. See you later. Thank you.